morning folks and welcome back to the FAA channel. Today we're talking about climate change. And today's story takes place in India and at Barefoot College. Here to tell us more is an environmental scientist. So Dr. Nalbandian, what is Barefoot College's impact on the environment? Barefoot College has a big impact on the environment. They do this by teaching solar mamas, women in third world countries, how to install solar energy. This does wonders for the environment by reducing kerosene levels. This is because many people, before having access to solar energy, were using kerosene lamps. Um, so solar engineers are seeing a reduction of kerosene levels by 98% in places that solar energy in is installed. This is in turn good for the environment since kerosene contributes to greenhouse gas emissions. Kerosene may also cause dizziness, headaches, and heart and lung issues. So reducing kerosene levels is better for the environment and helps to support human health. That's great. And I have another question for you. How do you think people can impact the environment the way Barefoot does? Great question, Francis. One way people could impact the environment the way Barefoot does is by switching from kerosene lamps to Pico solar lamps. These solar powered lamps have so many positives. They create more light and are cheaper. They're also very easily distributed. So if for some reason a community can't get solar power fully, they can still reduce their kerosene output. Thanks for that, Dr. Nalbandian. And now we have a new story live from Bourne's very own Sagamore Bridge. Francesca, take it away. And tricolor bats. Both of, the, both of these bats are protected as endangered species under the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act. These bats, bats seek out bridges for structure um, and protection for predators. As many of you know, there's a $4 billion rebuild expected to happen for the Bourne and Sagamore bridges. However, before these renovations can occur, a survey of bat population living under the bridges must be done. Back to you, Francis. Thank you for that, Francesco, reporting live from Canada with another guest, Dr. Morris. Thank you for having me. Of course, Dr. Morris. So tell us about what Barefoot College is doing to prevent and reverse climate change. Well, for one, Barefoot College is dedicated to sustainable development. They also train women from less fortunate communities how to make charcoal from dried leaves, coconut, and um, baobab husks, and other material waste. This organic charcoal is cheaper and burns more cleanly than normal charcoal. This helps the issue of deforestation increase a more env environmentally sustainable option. This organic charcoal helps reduce pollution and disease. Unlike natural charcoal that releases toxic fumes that are both bad for people's health and the environment. Interesting. Um, are there any other opportunities provided for communities to use um, more renewable energy? Barefoot College's students are known as solar mamas. These solar mamas also provide opportunities for villages in Guatemala and other less fortunate communities that use reusable energy instead of fossil fuels. This reduces the risk of inhaling toxic smoke and catching fires indoors. In a recent interview with Cassie Piccolo, the head of communications at Barefoot College International, she told us more about their solar program, which is helping less fortunate places off-grid that have no energy bypass using fossil fuels and go straight to using reusable energy. Cassie says that knowledge and education is the key to preventing and maybe even reversing the effects of climate change. She told me that the leading cause of climate change is land degradation, destruction of habitat, the misuse of water, and misuse of fertilizer. Interesting. One more question for you. How do you think other people can prevent climate change? Barefoot College's head of communication, Cassie Piccolo, says we should focus on solutions <laughs> we have. I, I can't continue. I need to hear this talk. My phone went off. Barefoot College's head of communications, Cassie Pickle, says we should focus on solutions we have because we have a lot. Some small individual things people can do is not using single-use plastic, not consuming fossil fuels, use electric cars, avoid burning wood, and avoid burning kerosene. Thank you for that, Dr. Morse. Reporting live from Greenland, we have Audrey to tell us how the climate is doing. Some polar bears. You can see them behind me right now. 
Unfortunately, scientists say that global polar bear numbers are projected to decline 30% by 2050. And why is this happening? Great question. Polar bears are slowly dying off because of the loss of sea ice. Polar bears live on sea ice, and when they have nothing to live off of, they can die. Another issue that contributes to polar bears dying off is overhunting. Despite their decrease in population, there has been an increase in polar bear hunting in Canada. The killing of polar bears had risen by 10% by the year 2013. That was 10 year, years ago, and the killings have failed to slow down. A 2020 study has predicted that the extinction of polar bears in the year 2100, if the emissions of greenhouse gases continues at this rate. So we encourage you all to take action and go green. Thank you, Audrey. Our final guest today is a conservation scientist. So Dr. Leopold, how does Barefoot College reduce the use of Earth's natural resources and how do they teach their students and the public? So um, most homes in India rely on kerosene for light and that's a problem because kerosene is not good for like people's health and it's not good for animals and it's not good for the environment. And Barefoot's working on solving that problem because they've already electrified thousands of homes and that's all thanks to the program that teaches women how to construct and maintain the solar panels that power those homes. And their work has helped um, save like thousands of liters of kerosene. And like, if you think about like how many, and they help um, save thousands of liters of kerosene. Oh, the work has um, helped save thousands of liters of kerosene. And like the main like point of Barefoot is they just like teach the women that go to the college and then like the women go home and teach their children and they teach the villagers what they've learned and then like all the people in the villages can just like benefit from it. And that like shows their impact because they're just not, they're not only um, helping the, or teaching the people in their college but they're also um, teaching other like communities and people like beyond. So yeah. That's awesome. One last question for you. How do you think we can spread knowledge about climate change? I think a great way to inform people is by um, like posting on social media and just like raising awareness. And you can like talk to your family and friends and that's also like really good. And just like talking about climate change can be like everyone can learn from it. So yeah. Thank you, Dr. Leopold. We have Alana live from Guatemala with a new story. Thanks, Francis. We're here in beautiful Guatemala taking a look at Barefoot coffee enterprise. After the Guatemalan Civil War, the government didn't provide a lot of assistance and there was a lot of damage done. Lots of traditional knowledge and oral history was lost due to all those that died in the war. Many Guatemalans are malnourished, unemployed, and illiterate. Thankfully, there is work being done to improve these issues. For example, Juan de Leon has collaborated with Barefoot College to help with Barefoot Coffee Enterprise. Barefoot Coffee Enterprise helps to teach women skills, help them make equitable pay, and helps farmers make coffee in, sustainable, in a sustainable way. Back to you, Francis. Thank you, Alana, and that's all we have for today. that comes from the rainy season and it enables them to have a water source.